Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are checking out Nobody, the 2021, I'm assuming thriller action movie. And I'm very excited for this movie because I've heard it is kind of like John Wick. And I love John Wick. John Wick is, as an action franchise, is amazing. The camera work, the stunts, the performances that John Wick, or <laughs> John Wick, that Keanu Reeves puts into that character is amazing so i'm really excited to see i think it's bob odenkirk the guy who plays better call saul i've never seen that movie or that show but i've heard that show is good but anyways i'm excited to see bob odenkirk just go ham on people and just punch people and get angry and punch more people and i'm excited to see good camera work good choreography well produced fights and yeah i'm excited to see what all the hype was about because this movie kind of came out of nowhere it was a very small movie, I feel like, and then it kind of hit theaters and a lot of people just started talking about it. At least for me, I got a lot of stuff on like my Instagram feed and stuff about it. I got a, st a lot of reviews on YouTube popping up. It was recommended to me quite a bit and I, for at least in my area of the internet, it got a lot of attention. So I'm very excited to see why it got a lot of attention. Anyways, this is also a very late night movie reaction for me. Usually I watch movies in the morning or in the early afternoon. I don't know, it's just kind of when I usually do them. I was gonna try and watch this movie at 8 p.m. tonight. It is now a 9.40 p.m. So some things happen in life, you know, like trying to order pizza for when your movie review is done and stuff. But, you know, that is that is all in the past now. I am here to watch this movie and I am very, very excited. Anyways, before we start, let's get into the lighting. So let me turn on my light and then we can decide what color the light should be. Boop. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so the color is actually going to be very bright today because it is so dark outside. It's as dark as it's going to get on this reaction channel because it is it is night. The sun has set. It is night. The only light I have now is the light on my left and the light on my right. And the light on my right is colored, so whatever color I choose is going to be great. And I know for a fact that there is a bus fight scene in this movie. I have seen that fight scene before. My dad showed it to me when this movie first came out because he was like, dude, this movie looks so cool. And he showed me this bus fight scene and Bob Odenkirk is just beating all these guys up in this bus, but he's also getting beat up. He gets like thrown out of a window. It was an awesome fight scene. The bus, I'm pretty sure, had yellow handrails. So because it's also going to be so dark, and because I know that there's yellow handrails in this movie, I'm pretty sure at least yellow poles, yellow handrails, stuff like that, I'm going yellow because it won't be a super intrusive color and it won't like just like make the whole room just like red, you know, like death red. So let's just dive on into it. I hope you enjoy my reaction to Nobody. In a perfect world, Bob Odenkirk beats everyone up. I'm also very glad that this movie is short, an hour and 31 minutes, because I feel like they're just gonna get straight to the point. Don't you know okay, I already like this movie, actually. I already like this movie. The start. Oh! So, so. Tensions are good! Is this from Kill Bill? I feel like this song is in Kill Bill. Or from Kill Bill. Me? Um, I'm nobody. Yeah, yeah, title drop, I'm nobody, I love it. Okay, yeah, boring job, family at home, life is life, maybe bad marriage or downhill marriage. Oh yeah, divide right there, that's not great. Stop missing, stop missing the garbage every day. Ew. It scared me that he was awake. I don't know why. It scared me that he was awake. That freaked me out. Dude, I'm not ready for horror movies when I have to watch them. I am not ready for those. Why did you guys choose to rob this house? What does he have that's of worth? Like those golf clubs, maybe? That, that's it? I use a debit card. Yeah, no one uses cash anymore. What the heck? Take it. Aww. Oh yes. Remember those things. Remember those things, Bob. Hey! Hey, get off him! No! No, 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 no. Do it. Smash your head. I said let him go. Bob, you had your chance, and now the family's gonna die? 
Uh, he kind of did the right thing, though. They left. What the fuck, Dad? They left without hurting anyone, though, so it kind of worked. I feel like if he had attacked, I know she had a gun, but she could have shot. She might not have been knocked unconscious. I feel like in that situation, I know it was supposed to show that he was cowardly, but I think he also sort of did the right thing. Like, it worked out well. I love that inside, though, he's like this a very aggressive person with like the narration that he had in his brain and then also the about to swing and then not wanting to do it. It's like he's almost about to do it, but then he catches himself last second. Oh, it's like kind of that's what it's kind of like. So I feel like when he just lets it loose, it's going to be great. We need a cat. That's why he has a cat at the end, in honor of his daughter, who probably dies. He actually saw some action. Yeah, maybe. Have a great day. Okay, this kid does not have to be this mean to his dad. Come on. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. All right, kids, let's go. Come on, let's go. There's a lot of tension in the family. You can really just feel it in the air. The daughter, oblivious to it. Everyone else. Oh my god, you missed the garbage can. Aw, oh, man. Be safe, so. Jesus! Alright. Safety's on. That scared me. What the heck? Ah, that's gonna be used later. I'm excited. What do you want with this place anyway? Guess I just want something that's mine, you know? Oh, oh, what the heck? That was a good line. He has a good memory though. Maybe he has a photo memory or something. He can remember that tattoo. I would not have remembered that at all. There were two of them. A man and a woman. Who are they, who is he talking to? Maybe like a friend? Not really that okay, are you? He's almost embarrassed to go into the house in a way, you know? Embarrassed and sad. They couldn't have stolen that. Would they? That's the last straw. You steal my daughter's kitty cat bracelet, you're getting punched in the face. I can't believe they let this old man keep his gun. Soundtrack kind of bopping. This is the place, this is the place, I like it. So, who are you? Oh, man. What does that tattoo mean? You too, oh, old he knows, he knows, he must know what that means. Wow. Oh, okay, so he must have been really good at fighting. He must have been really good at fighting. That's why he can analyze the situation so well. That's why he knows what type of gun is what gun. Dude, I love it. Because he told his son that he hadn't really seen a lot of action. I think it's the opposite. Well, okay, I'm pretty sure I know it's the opposite. Rico Willem, mi amor. Oh, now that was sick. In his face, now. The watch. You didn't even sell it, you just kept it. I thought you were gonna sell it at least. <laughs> Give me the goddamn kitty cat bracelet, motherfucker! <laughs> you know what you're about? That, is, you that is one line I didn't know I needed in a movie. Give me the goddamn kitty cat bracelet. <laughs> oh, they have a baby. They're also a family. You're gonna break your you're gonna break your knuckles. Oh, this is the bus fight. This is the bus fight. I've seen this fight. It is very good. Beat him up just because you can. Do it. 
Oh my god, these guys don't know what they're in for. Dude, the soundtrack actually great. Soundtrack actually great. This girl's gonna get home safe tonight. I hope these assholes like hospital food. <laughs> I love his inner dialogue. It's fucking stupid. It's stupid, hey, right? Guys, guys. Yes, here we what go. Here we go. Man. I hope the fights get better than this. You know, and this is a good fight. <laughs> He's got to get his rhythm going. He has got to get his rhythm going. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Woohoo! guy stabbed him once, but oh my god, I stabbed someone. Oh, broken arm. Oh, the tag team there. What I really like is that he does get beat up and he gets beaten down and is bleeding and bloody. Like, yes, he's like a superhuman in terms of fighting, but he is also human and it is very, it is shown very well in this movie by how much he gets beat up. Oh, what a move, what a move, what a move. <laughs> stop requested, stop requested, please. Let's stop. Um, I that's I'd hate to wake up on a bed of glass like that. Imagine all the little pieces stuck inside your skin. Oh, this is the most epic part of all time. Oh my gosh, goes into the bus, beat up. Round two, baby. Oh yes, he's warmed up, ready to fight. Oh. Oh, oh, that was awesome. What an awesome take. Look how casually he walks over to that pole too. Oh wait, I hate this part. This is the part that I remember the most because it's, it's so disgusting. Ugh. Oh, it's so gross. Why does he do this? Oh, is it so he can breathe? Is it so he can breathe? I thought he just did it for aesthetic purposes, but I think it's so he can breathe. Oh man, I'm never gonna get the image of the straw in someone's neck. It's like in Doctor Who, there's an episode of Doctor Who in like season three or something, one of the first episodes where this lady goes around drinking people's blood with a straw. She like pokes it in and drinks it and it always disturbed me. Say it back to him. Say I miss Remember you too. Used to be. What if she was also like some crazy fighter? That'd be fun. The family of fighters like Spy Kids. <laughs> they literally have a wall in between them. There is a literal wall in between them. Take down that barrier. Hey, she's open to change. I like it. Doesn't even look, I bet. Yeah, it doesn't even look crossing traffic. Just expects people to stop. Now that's, now that's how you know he's cool. Ah, every good villain does cocaine. I never thought there would be a dance party in Nobody, but this is a bop. Is everyone racist in Russia or something? Why are these guys so racist? Oh my god. Oh no, his eye? Ew. Ah. Ow. That was unnecessary. That man was doing nothing. He just killed some random lad. Some lad who was just enjoying himself. He's like, you know what? I have got some stake in this. I'm happy. I've done well in my life. And then all of a sudden, the next thing he knew, he had a glass shoved into his face and he was dead. Mm, okay. 
Okay. It's taking a while for this to happen, though. This movie is only an hour and a half. I feel like there's not a lot of time left. Okay, just... Okay. I was gonna say, what's the reason to grab a chair? Just so he can throw it at this man's face. He's very dramatic. Julian? Please don't get more mad. You shouldn't have said anything. You should have just stayed in the shadows. How can I find this man? Oh my god. They got his metro card. <laughs> that was a fun edit. The music all of a sudden just stops. It stops so abruptly. You have my back. I'm proud of you. Morning. Morning. It's a new day. It's a new life. It's about to all be destroyed, though. That lasagna that you love tonight. You know, from scratch, like I used to. It's been a while. Lasagna. <laughs> I love lasagna. Always down for lasagna. Invite me over. So he's a bad guy. You don't understand the trouble that you're in. Fuck. Also, they can't just say the guy's name. What if there's like 20 people in America called Hutch, whatever his last name is. So like, they need to specify that a little bit. Nobody. He's a nobody. That's actually cool, what the heck? Hey, how about we all head to Italy this summer? We've always talked about going back. Oh, I'd love that. I want to go to Italy in the summer, actually. Maybe I'll go with you guys. Oh? Because yeah. you know Rome is where mom and dad live. You know mom and dad is like, Get them out of the house. Get your family out of the dang house. Now she knows it's serious. Don't call 911. I love that he has this safety precaution though. He knew eventually something like this could happen. I like it. Dude, what the heck? He's actually sick. Did they not hear the firing upstairs? <laughs> I love it when he wipes the when he wipes the blood on his sweater. That was cool. Oh, oh, using this environment. I like it. Oh, what a waste of lasagna, though. They defeated him. I didn't think that was going to happen. Oh my god, they actually defeated him. Dude, Hutch is actually god tier. This guy, this is not his first radio in a car trunk. <laughs> that was sick. I used to make sure that there was no one left to him. He, he got so bored of that story that he died. What if someone else is alive? The lasagna. He cleaned up nicely. Dude, the son's gonna be like, what the heck, dad? You're actually Superman. I will. But not now. I need to take care of this. I love how optimistic he is. He's like, I'm gonna be living through this. Don't worry about it. Come back. We'll deal with us then. I don't like the garage doors. I'll take what the someone... somewhere safe. Uh, I'm always worried that someone's gonna be right outside the garage door. I know your boss sent you here. But you gotta know when to say no. You gotta know when to say no. He had a wife. She came with two kids. They had another on the way. They had a dog. He was working Aww. nine to five. Nothing to skim. He was like literally like a boogeyman. So I told my bosses I was out of the game. 
And we're not happy to hear it. He was a villain, pretty much, wasn't he? Oh my god, what the heck? It's a... This man has set up a trap house, and it's so fun. Red Roses 2. Also, I think it's funny when I said at the start that he has his anger inside of him, and he just has to let it loose. He was holding it back. He was holding it back. I think that's so good. Shaking hands, saying howdy. Aw, oh, man, I was vibing. What a wonderful world. Are they gonna kill the dad? He doesn't have his gun anymore, right? Because Hutch took the gun. Oh my god, yes. My man came prepared. Oh, right through him. <laughs> There's no blood splatter on the wall that you can see. That man has a hole in his chest. Yes. Yes. Commence the slaughter. Is he making a trap house in his work area? Are we gonna get, see some good security camera footage of him beating people up? This is my The soundtrack of this movie is phenomenal. Oh my god, his glass, his jar bomb. No, don't destroy his painting. That's actually a good one. Okay, he's doing it. I've seen that painting in real life, I think. Oh my god, it's gasoline in the sprinklers. This guy's actually a mad genius. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> a dinner with wine center platform area. Jesus Christ, Hutch. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good shot. That was a really good shot. After all, we can both rebuild, right? Right. Mm, wait. Rebuild? Rebuild, yeah. What? Everything you have had. Everything you had. <laughs> I love just changing in front of his face, changing the tense. And based on what little I know of the man, that's probably more than he deserved. He's like, you're right. He was not a great person. <laughs> yeah. Hutch is the coolest character of all time. Of all time. Of all time. Dude, what the heck? What a shot. Oh, awesome. Heartbreaker, dream taker. Dude, what the heck? This is so awesome. I think it's the music that's really just pumping me. And the music is kind of like on beat with the main actions of the action. It's really cool. And also just like this car stuff in general, like it's all real. You can tell that it's real. It looks really good. The camera work is good. The action is good. The music is good. What else could you ask for? No, don't turn the music off. Yeah, trap house. Never follow a man to his lair. Never do that. Oh my god, the dad. <laughs> god damn it. I just realized that's Christopher Lloyd. I just realized, I was like, he looks like Doc from Back to the Future. And then I was like, wait, that's... Doc is Christopher Lloyd, and that's Christopher Lloyd. Now the movie's 100% better that Doc from Back to the Future is in it. Oh. Oh my god, that was awesome. Oh 
Oh my god, over the shoulder. <laughs> Triple kill. Prepare for takeoff. I like how they just knew about all these traps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny, but it was. Oh my god. Look at Bob go. You know, fridges can protect- Oh yeah, the age-old trick. You know, fridges can protect against anything. Gunshots, nuclear bombs from in Indiana, in Indiana Jones 4. And Behind you, Christopher Lloyd. Okay, that's a cool shot. That is a cool shot. Okay, okay, that was really cool. Oh no! It had to happen eventually. One of them had to get hit. We'll pay the price. You're wasting your bullets, my guy. Bulletproof glass, baby. That was a really cool shot, though. That was a really cool shot. Yeah, get out of here. All right, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> Dad's like, yeah, I'm gonna go. Where's the cat, though? There has to be a cat suit. Ansel, please leave your name and number, and I'll call you right back. Oh, there's the cat. Baby, you <laughs> They all know about him now, that's awesome. I love it. I'm pretty sure that song is in Kill Bill. And I, I, I quite enjoy it. We have another mission for you. Does this house have a... Uh... A basement. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> What a fun little after credit scene. Is there another one do you think? And that was my reaction to Nobody, the 2021 action thriller starring Bob Odenkirk, Connie Nelson, Christopher Lloyd, RZA, and quite a few other people. That movie was a lot of fun. And when I was on um, the credits, Amazon gives like trivia on the side, which I think is kind of fun, but it's also weird because no other streaming service does that. But they give trivia on the side, and apparently this movie was inspired by Bob Odenkirk's own experience. Not that he actually was punching people and beating everyone up, but he had a home invasion and he trapped the trespassers in a basement, and he was kind of upset about, or maybe a little bit frustrated or angry or annoyed about how the police kind of dealt with that whole situation so he was kind of wondering okay well how would i have dealt with it if i could fight and if i was just a big buff man who could kill people at will you know i think that's a really fun idea i think that's a really cool way to get an idea because it's something that actually happens so he has sort of a real life experience to attach to this movie to make it a little bit more realistic i just think that's a cool little story to have with this movie but i thought this movie was so much fun it felt like john wick I'm sure some people who worked on John Wick worked on this movie, but it felt a little bit like John Wick, but it also felt a little bit more gritty. I don't know, John Wick to me always felt a little bit more clean, a little bit more smooth, because John Wick is a professional hitman sort of deal, you know? It always feels, John Wick feels smooth, but this movie felt very gritty. And John Wick is gritty, don't get me wrong, John Wick is very gritty, but this movie had more grit to it for some reason at least that's how i felt about it john wick is like a smooth a smooth whiskey i don't know i don't have it don't drink whiskey but john wick is like a smooth whiskey and bob odenkirk's nobody is like a cheap whiskey you know rough on the tongue rough on the throat i don't know if that is a bad analogy or not but that is how i'm describing this movie before i get into the movie though let's do the reviews because when i search up the cast reviews pop up i like to talk about them really quickly so 7.4 out of 10 on imdb and 84 percent ron tomato seems like critics really like this movie and it seems like audiences also really like this movie i think 7.4 is a good score i think 84 percent is a fun score this movie you don't really there's definitely some stuff that you're like okay why did this happen why is it why is he here like why did they not shoot this person at this point you know there are stuff that you could definitely nitpick about this movie but 
a lot of fun and the action scenes were great. But before we get into the action scenes, we're going to talk about the score, the music. The score for this movie, maybe not the score, but the soundtrack for this movie was really, really good. It was so much fun. There were songs that I knew as well. All of the songs in the soundtrack I knew, so it made it even more fun because I could sing along to them, whether out loud or in my head. Sorry if you watched my uncut reaction and I was singing aloud. I'm sorry. that I know my singing is bad. I just can't help it sometimes, but yeah, whenever they were playing like Wonderful World and stuff, I was jamming out to that. But my favorite, my favorite piece of the soundtrack, I forget what the song is called, but it was when there was the car chase happening and they were, he was doing like all these cool car moves and stuff. There was a bus, he was swinging past the bus and whatever song that was that was playing, it worked so well with the scene and it got me so like hyped to, to just watch this scene. And the action, yes, was good and the acting was good and the, the stunts were good. But for some reason, it was the soundtrack that really hit home that scene. And I thought that the soundtrack in general was amazing. Again, the song choices were amazing, not just because I knew the words to all of the songs, but because I thought the song choices just fit each scene very, very well. I liked that the bus scene did not have any sound besides the diegetic sound that could be heard. There was no music or anything. I liked that. Again, it felt very grounding. It felt very real, very gritty, and I think it very really set the tone to the fighting of the movie because there was no music. That's what I really liked about it. But for some of the other fights, there was music, and I loved it. The music choice was great. I especially loved the Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood song that played at the start and the end because I'm pretty sure that that song is in Kill Bill, and I thought that was a, little, a good little nod to Kill Bill. Uh, if it's not in, I'm pretty sure it is in Kill Bill. It might be from Kill Bill or it might just be used in Kill Bill, but either way, I'm like 99% sure is in Kill Bill, so I think that is a fun little nod to that Quentin Tarantino movie, probably a movie that had some inspiration going into, like this movie took some inspiration from Kill Bill probably, and probably from John Wick, and then also just from the other stunt coordinators and stuff who were working on this film. But yeah, I thought that the soundtrack was great. Getting into the stunts now, the stunts were amazing. The stunts and the action was, it was just so good. Um, and a lot of you might be going, okay, but you like long takes and there weren't that many long takes in this movie. And yes, I do like my long takes. Yes, would I have wished for some really cool long takes in this movie? Sure, yes, and there were some. The bus scene had this really cool one that was like 15 seconds long. When they were fighting in the in the work area, there was a really cool like 10 second long take and stuff. There were some cool long takes, but there was nothing like crazy, you know? There was nothing insane like in Shang-Chi or something like that. If you've seen that, there were some crazy long takes in that that blew my mind away. But the action in this movie was really good because whenever they were fighting, the camera kind of moved with Bob in a way, which was really cool. Like if Bob throws a punch, the camera would sort of like move with the punch a little bit or something or jerk and I thought that really added an extra effect to the punches to all the action because with the camera was moving a little bit uh, not as much as if you've seen there's this one movie I totally forget what it's called now it's like this guy and he gets an implant or something and then he becomes like this bion bionic person with like an artificial intelligence or whatever and the camera really just like moves with him back and forth and it's really cool it wasn't to that extent but it did move a little bit and sometimes it, it just kind of felt very fluid with how Bob Odenkirk was fighting and it really helped his fighting scenes because I'm sure that the guy is a good fighter but he's also I don't know probably like 50 something maybe 45 50 so like he's gonna need a little bit of camera help a little bit of good editing a little bit of good camera work to make him really sell these punches and I think that the camera work did a great job at selling those punches. I also think that the camera work did a really good job of keeping everything in frame. That is why I'm not complaining about there not being these like crazy wide takes that I, that I really like in action sequences because with every shot you could tell what was happening very clearly and the cuts were very uh, were, like designed in this movie I guess to really be very impactful. Every cut had its purpose. Whenever there was a cut, there was like an impact or there was like about to be an impact and the cut, it cut so that you get this bigger impact. But it wasn't like this crazy born identity, like, you know, it was like two seconds, two seconds, three seconds. And you could really get like the flow of the action with these long takes. And now I'm just punching the air because I feel like punching because whenever I watch movies like this, I just want to punch stuff because I feel exhilarated. But yeah, that that was something that I really appreciated with the camera work was that even though there weren't these crazy long takes or these crazy wide shots that I really like in my action movies, the camera work was still amazing enough and the choreography worked with the camera work so well that 
you could tell what was happening in camera even though the cuts were like two seconds long or three seconds long and speaking of the choreography what i really liked about this movie as well was how bob's character hutch used the environment around him to uh to perform all of his punching and fighting and stuff it kind of felt like jackie chan in a way because if you watch a lot of jackie chan movies he uses a lot of his environment like if he's on a couch he'll use the pillow to block or something and then he'll flip the couch or like you know he'll he'll use his environment and that is what a lot of fighters would do right if you have something of value on the side on the table or something you're probably going to pick it up if it's going to help you in a fight and i really liked especially when he was in his house at the like for the first fight basically when everyone comes in with their guns to try and kidnap him for the first time he hits people with like boiling water and then the kettle and stuff and i thought it was just really creative it was really well done and again the way that he used objects that were around him to aid him in the fight made the fights more realistic more gritty and more gruesome and i enjoyed it so much i just I thought it was really, really good. Also, another thing that I didn't know this movie was gonna have was amazing cinematography. This movie was kind of beautiful. Like, some of the shots in this movie were amazing. There was this gunshot where it's focused on the gun. It's like a very close up of the gun and the gun is spinning through the air and it lands in the guy's hand. Like, what the heck? Who comes up with this shot? That shot is amazing. Whenever there were like these wide shots of Bob Odenkirk standing in front of fire and like the money burning or his house burning, just beautiful shots, beautifully framed, just beautifully lit, just really, 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 really nice to look at. Very aesthetically pleasing, I guess. Just burning stuff in general, very, very aesthetically pleasing. And then there was, there were just some really cool shots. One, actually, one of my favorite shots, my favorite shot was the gunshot, but my second favorite shot was when he was sitting down at the table at the club and all of these bodyguards are surrounding him and then the main villain standing right there. And he reaches for the bomb that's under the cloth, right? And the camera swivels around with him and as it's swiveling around with his hand, all of the bodyguards point their guns at his head it was just a really creative way to make the scene more dramatic, and I thought that that camera movement, very subtle, but very, very effective, thought it was good. Now I'm getting into the cast. I feel like I could talk a lot about this movie, but I'm just gonna get into the cast because I don't know what else I'd talk about, even though I feel like if I kept talking, I'd start going over the same things, but I also feel like I could talk a lot about this movie. But anyways, let's get to the cast. I'm just gonna talk about Alexei Sarabrek. Kov. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced his name. And then Christopher Lloyd, Connie Nelson, and Bob Odenkirk. Connie Nelson, maybe not even because, I don't know, she didn't really play that big of a part in the movie, but Alexei Sarah, I'm so sorry, Sarah Brekov as Yulian. I really enjoyed him as a villain. His opening shot was really, really, really good. That camera work, that was good camera work and just a great entrance for this guy he steps his car goes aloof and you know it kind of like goes over to the other side of the road he steps out of his car walks across the road without looking which i know oh no he walked across the road without looking but it was a busy road he just expects not to get hit you can tell he is important you can tell that he is kind of like this he has this presence about him when he's walking across the road that you can really feel because he just walks straight across. They, everyone lets him in so you can tell that he's really important. It was just a very good way to set up this character with just visuals. I thought it was a very creative way and a very good way to set up this menacing figure, this important figure, and this kind of, not brave figure, but like... I don't know, this menacing figure, I guess. I Maybe I just said menacing, I don't know. I don't remember the words I said three seconds ago, but I thought that he played this guy really well. I loved when he turned and just killed that random guy, that stakeholder, that 3% stakeholder. I was like, okay, this man was just enjoying his drink and happy to be alive, and the next second he has a glass scraped across his face and he's dead. But I thought that was a very good a way, again, to introduce this character. And then I did think that he was kind of a stereotypical villain. Again, this movie is an hour and a half. You don't really have time to make everyone an amazing character. They gave Bob Odenkirk and even his Connie Nelson and stuff like a pretty good range of character development, but you don't have time to give everyone that. The villain felt kind of, besides his entrance, which was really, really good, I don't, I didn't remember his name. I didn't really like care about him when he died. I, he was just kind of more of an obstacle than a character for Bob Odenkirk to overcome. He was menacing, but he wasn't like the most interesting villain for me, but besides that, I, th I thought that Alexei Sarabrikov, 
I'm so sorry again if I mispronounced his name, did a really good job. Christopher Lloyd did a good job. I don't know why else, why else you want me to say. This man is a legend. He had some of those great facial expressions that I was remembering from Back to the Future. And obviously, I think that he did them better in Back to the Future. But he still, there were glimpses of them in this movie and it just made my day. I, I don't know why it took me so long to realize that uh, Hutch's dad, David, was Christopher Lloyd. And I knew Christopher Lloyd was in this movie, but I saw Christopher Lloyd and I was like his name in the credits at the start. And I was like, I love Christopher Lloyd. But then I was like, who is Christopher Lloyd? I just couldn't remember a face. And then I see this man and I'm like, he looks like Doc. And then it just all connected as to, like and the, in the third act. And I felt so dumb, but... I thought he did a really good job. He was so much fun. He wasn't in the movie too much, but when he was in the movie, I had a blast with him, and I think he was having a blast, no pun intended, because of the shotguns in this movie. I thought Christopher Lloyd did a really good job. Connie Nelson as Becca. I thought she was really good, but she wasn't in the movie too much, but I thought that she was a very good character to be matched with Hutch, and I liked that she was very open to this thing, to this, uh, like, relationship that Bob wanted back because he was talking to her he was like we haven't done this we haven't done this like we haven't kissed we haven't hugged in a long time and she, like yeah I'm sure a lot of people would get really mad at that and I'm sure she was very sad by that but she kind of took it and then tried to work with it and I really respected that as a character as a person I really respected that as because she, she listened to him it shows that she cares for him it shows that she listens to him and I don't know I really like that in her character I also like that she just accepted him she's like yeah I know you're a killer just just go kill these people you know we'll be off somewhere we'll come back you'll be alive and he's like yeah I'll be alive you know <laughs> it's like I really like that as well I don't know why I thought that was just funny that she was just like okay just go kill these people just do it. And I'm sure that they've had this stuff in the past. He said that at one point, like it's like old, the olden times or something, but I still thought it was kind of funny. Uh, I, yeah, I thought Connie Nelson did a really good job. And finally, Bob Odenkirk, the man himself. I never knew that I needed Bob Odenkirk to be this angry and this like punchy in my life. Like I didn't know I needed this movie until I watched it. I especially didn't know I needed the line where he was just like, where is the kitty cat bracelet while holding a gun to someone's head? I, that line is always going to go down as the best line in cinema history. And especially because Bob Odenkirk said it was such grit and such like tenacity. Like, ah, you know, so good. I thought his action scenes in this movie were amazing. I never thought he would be such a good action star. But man, I want another action movie starring Bob, Bob Odenkirk. He was so good. He played such a believable, like, everyday man. But he also played such a believable action hero. And I thought that was what really made this work is because he was very believable as the everyday man. And so when, there, when the action came and he had to punch his way out of it, you're like, oh my gosh, this guy is getting a little bit beaten up. And it felt more real, especially against John Wick, because John Wick just feels perfect for some reason, like the character just feels like a perfect hero, but this guy didn't feel like a perfect hero, even though he'd done so many things in his past, the present moment where the character was at, he didn't feel perfect, and he did make some mistakes, he got shot, he gets punched, he gets stabbed, and again, it just made the, the film, the fighting, everything, the characters feel more down to earth, more relatable, and just like I've said a thousand times, more real. I thought Bob Odenkirk was amazing in this movie. I think this is one of my favorite performances from him, to be honest. And I'm sure I've seen a few of his other movies. I've seen, uh, what's that show, Breaking Bad? He was Saul in that movie, and he was really, or in that show, and he was really good. I'm sure I've seen some of his other movies, but this is definitely one of his top performances for me. I really, really enjoyed it. So yeah, that is my review of Nobody. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. This is the last movie before Halloween movies. We are going to be doing Halloween movies all October. I am very, very nervous for them because I don't like horror movies, so... Oh, wish me luck. Okay, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction.